I was starting a new job just outside of San Diego, California, and I had to get directions. This was before you had smartphones, and they would tell you every turn that you needed to make. And so I got the directions, and they said, turn right on uh, when this road dead ends into Hamashaw, and, and then just follow Hamashaw. I said, okay, that's great. Made it real easy. It was like three turns. Couldn't get lost doing three turns. So I went out the next morning, my very first morning where I was going to start at the church, gave myself double the time to make sure that, that I would be there on time. And I was following this road, and there was no Hamashaw. And then the road dead ended into a shopping complex. I'm like, I'm in trouble. <clears throat> That's not good. So I started calling the phone numbers that I had, and it, it was Sunday morning. And Sunday mornings when, when you work in a church can be a little hectic. And so the first couple of phone calls went to voicemail. And then finally, somebody called me back, and they're like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, hey, you know, I, I don't want to be late, but, but here's where I'm at, and I, I, I've got no idea what to do. And they said, well, did you turn on Hamashaw? And I said, I haven't seen Hamashaw. And they're like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in some shopping complex. And they're like, where is that? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm not from around here. I'm sitting in this, this shopping complex, and the only, the only street I see is Jamacha. And they're like, what? I'm like, the only street I see is Jamacha. And they're like, can you spell that? I'm like, well, J-A-M-A-C-H-A. They're like, yeah, that's Hamashaw. Not to a kid from Akron, Ohio, it's not. I'm looking for H-A-M-I-S-H-A-W. That's what I'm looking for. They're like, yeah, you've been sitting there for 10 minutes. Just take your turn and follow Hamashaw, like the directions say. You ever been misunderstood? You ever, you ever had, a, had a misunderstanding? I mean, it's a, it's a frustrating experience. Sometimes it can damage things. It can damage relationships. And, and when it damages a relationship that we care about, we're eager to get it fixed. Sometimes our, our misunderstandings cause trouble with, with ourselves or, or with those that we care about. But here's a promise for all of us who follow Jesus. And that promise is this. You are going to be misunderstood. The promise for every single one of us who follows Jesus is very simply this. You are going to be misunderstood. And we have to come to terms with that, and we have to understand that. And that's where we're going to start this morning as we continue our look at, at a couple books that one of Jesus' best friends by the name of John that he wrote as we continue our look at 1 John this morning. If you have your Bible apps on your phones or your tablets, you can follow along. Otherwise, the verses will be up there on the screens as we dive in this morning to 1 John chapter 3, starting at verse 1, where we read these words. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Check this out. What kind of love God has given to us. God loves us so incredibly that out of everything that we could be known as, out of any dynamic in any relationship that God would choose to utilize to express his affection for us is as one that we are his children. That we are God's children. And so we are. We have been accepted as children of God as a result of what Jesus has accomplished on our behalf. God now sees us as his kids. This is incredible. And yet there's another side to the coin. And the other side of the coin is this. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. And so we've been given this beautiful picture of adoption right off the bat. That God sees us, He loves us, He calls us His own. He adopts us, He is our Father. He sees us as His children. But the other side to that equation, and that incredible equation which it is, but the other side to that equation is very simply this. 
the world does not know you. God knows you. God sees you as his child. The world does not know you. The world does not understand you. And the reason for that isn't you. The reason is they don't get God. They don't understand him. And so we have this incredible promise right off the bat that God sees us as his kids. And yet we have this incredible warning right off the bat that it isn't going to be easy for us. And there's going to be misunderstandings in the world in which we live because the world in which we live doesn't get our dad. So they're not going to get us. Beloved, we are, now, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Because of this relationship, because we are now God's children, we are all a work in progress. And within all of us, there needs to be the work of transformation going on. We have been transformed by God in that he has now taken us in as his children. But if as anybody who's had kids understands, the birth is just the beginning. And you got a long way to go. Because they're capable of some incredible things and they're incredible. They're capable of some of the dumbest things that you've ever experienced. And I'm not just talking bad about kids, because you were capable of the same thing. And I was capable of the same thing. It's part of the learning process. All of us need to be transformed. And the same is true in the spiritual realm as well. We, as followers of Jesus, need to be undergoing the work of transformation. And so we shouldn't look the same six months from now as we look today. And we definitely shouldn't look the same six years from now as we look today. God needs to be at work within us, changing us, making us more and more and more like him. And so within all of our lives, there needs to be a work that is ongoing. My youngest son, a, a couple weeks ago, turned four. And we got him some birthday presents, and, and then he got visited by his grandparents. And then they took him out, and he got to pick a couple toys. The toys they picked out while he was with his, his grandparents were for chil children eight and up. Which, you know, I mean, doesn't really sound like a big deal. He is huge into the Transformer phase right now. He absolutely loves them. So what did he get? He got a Transformer. That right on the box says for ages eight and up. This thing is supposed to transform easily. It should be for ages 38 and up. <laughs> he handed me the transformer and said, Dad, make it a car. And I said, okay, bud. This transformer doesn't want to be a car, buddy. <laughs> He's like, no, I, I want it to be a car. Ten minutes of trying. I could not turn that trans. Eight and up. I couldn't turn the transformer after ten minutes into like even, even resemble a car. Like we couldn't even get the outer shell of a car body with what I was trying. I broke the transformer at one point. It was not good. And so uh, after a few days, Dad, this transformer really wants to be a car. I'm like, okay. So I took the transformer one day. And first had to figure out what I had broken and not put back on correctly. And then put that back on. And two hours later, this toy that is for ages eight and up was still not a car. <clears throat> I finally swallowed my pride and went to YouTube. And I saw the video. And in what was a 15-minute video... An additional two hours, that's right, it took me four hours to transform a car, a transformer into a car, a toy that is for ages eight and up. It took a grown man four hours of his time to turn that transformer into a car. I've got news for you, it ain't going back. It is never again going to be a transformer. That thing is going to be a car until it gets thrown away or donated. It's not going back. Four hours to transform the car. Two hours while watching a 15-minute 
YouTube video. Transformation takes time. Whether we're talking about a toy built for eight-year-olds or whether we're talking about the work that God is doing within all of our lives, transformation takes time. It is a process, and there needs to be progress, but understand, transformation takes time. And what can happen is we set goals for ourselves and we think, all right, I need to accomplish this. But if we don't look the way we thought we should look and if everything in our lives isn't operating in the way that we feel everything in our lives should be operating, we can throw in the towel and we can give up because we're like, I just can't change. Here's the deal. Transformation takes time. It is all about progress, and it is a process. You don't need to be finished, but you do need to be under construction. And as people who drive on Wisconsin roads, we can understand this. You don't need to be finished, because seldom are the construction projects finished. You just need to be under construction. And that is what the charge is for all of us who follow Jesus. That we need to be under construction, that it is a process, and we need to be showing progress. Now, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. The work of Jesus is to destroy sin. The work of Jesus is to destroy sin. He came and he took it away. And in him, in Jesus, there is no sin. And so I'm just going to read these verses again for you one more time. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning, who makes a practice of sinning, also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. The work of Jesus is to destroy sin. He took it away and he dealt with it once and for all when he died on the cross and he rose again three days later. But now the work of God within all of us is to change us. That's the work of God. Now, how many of you have played the game Guess Who? Let me see your hands. Come on. All right, you played the game Guess Who. How many of you like the game Guess Who? You you can put your hand down if you don't really like it. Still like the game Guess Who? How many of you feel like you're pretty good at Guess Who? Yeah? Who wants to play me right now in Guess Who? Come on. You beat me, you get a $10 iTunes gift card. All right? Brooklyn has it, so if you beat me, you feeling good? All right, we'll see. This is this is brand new. All right, this is brand. You want to be red or blue? You want? Are you you rocking a Lions jersey? So we'll give you some blue. All right. Yeah. As a, as a Lions fan, I hope you win. I mean, you got to have some victories, you know. So. <laughs> I'm a Browns fan. It's okay. All right. Everybody's like, don't trash talk the child, Brian. Like, I'm a Browns fan. All right, there you go. We're, we're not going to shuffle or, or take the, uh, I'm going to let you go first. Nope, it would help if I had all my characters up. Go ahead, you can ask me the first question. Is your faith genuine as glasses? No. No. No glasses. So put all the glasses down. Okay. Uh, is your person a man? Yes. Is your person white? No. Does your person have blonde hair? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm competitive, all right? 
Not your $10 iTunes gift card on the line. No. Is your person Gail? Don't get it. Oh, give it up. Give it up. Who helped him? Hold on. This. Thank you very much. Go have a seat. Brooklyn's got your gift card. Who over here told him, Brandon? You guys could see my card. There was a cheater. I'm still going to give you the gift card because I'm a man of my word, but I'm pretty sure somebody was cheating <laughs> over there. Congratulations. Way to go. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Now, when you play Guess Who, what happens? You're given all these different choices, and you have to narrow it down. You have to limit it. And so you're given a card, and what happens? You see the card, you use your senses, you see your card, and then you know that person. So that when the other person guesses, you can reveal who the person actually is. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that Jesus appeared. Jesus appeared. Why? In order to take away sins. And in Jesus, there is no sin. No one who abides in Jesus keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen Jesus or what? Knows him. Lakeside, fix your eyes on Jesus. This is why we've, we've talked in the past few weeks. It is so important that you get to understand the heart of God as revealed in Scripture. If we're going to know Him, we have to be engaged with the heart of God, and it is revealed for us in Scripture. So I'm just going to challenge you again. As a follower of Jesus who needs to be in progress, understanding that it's a process, it starts with understanding the heart of God. You have to be engaged with God's revealed heart. The scripture. Why is this so important? Well, he continues. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Let no one deceive you, and yet we live in a world that doesn't understand us. Because they didn't understand God. And so we have to understand that there's a lot of deception. That we're literally inundated with every single day of our lives. We're inundated with this. And some of it we can see from a mile away and we're just like, yeah, that's, that's not accurate. That, that can't be right. But some of it on the surface, it sounds and it looks really good. And if we're not careful, we can easily be deceived once again why it's so important that we are aligning our hearts and our minds with the heart of God as revealed to us in Scripture. Because there are people who want to deceive us. There are people who who want to take us in places we need not go. And then he says, whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous, but whoever makes a practice of sinning, check this out, is of the devil. Now, does this mean that anybody who sins isn't really a follower of Jesus? No. No. What's the point? What does this mean? Well, what's practice? Does anybody who, who's ever played a sport or coached a sport or, or, or done, done really anything, you, you've got to practice to get good at something. 
And practice is very simply repeated effort. It's repeated effort. It's when you go to the gym and you want to be good at basketball and you go to the free throw line and you don't stop shooting free throws until your arms ache and you work on your form and you work on getting rid of all the distractions so that when the big moment comes in the game and you're fouled and the game's on the line, you go to the free throw line with the basketball in hand and you've worked on your mechanics so much that it's natural. It's a repeated effort. That's what practice is. What you habitually do, what you habitually do reveals who you are. What you habitually do reveals who you are. So I just want to challenge you today. Don't fall victim to what God has already destroyed. Jesus came to destroy sin. Don't fall victim to what God has already destroyed. And here's a vital question that each and every one of us needs to ask. In our lives, are we making progress or are we making excuses? Am I making progress or am I making excuses? When I understand the fact that as a follower of Jesus, I am a child of God, Am I becoming more and more like God? Am I becoming somebody who who moves closer and closer to this picture of doing the right thing? Am Am I somebody who is in progress? Am I engaged in a process that is moving me more and more and more like Jesus? Or am I somebody who's throwing in the towel and who instead is making excuses? There's always a reason. There's always a reason why. And instead of being in progress, I am stuck and I'm not moving any closer to being like God. And instead of making progress, I find myself making excuses and trying to reason away why I find myself making the same mistake time and time again that I should no longer be making. This is the question that we all have to ask ourselves right now. Are we making progress or are we making excuses? Because as followers of Jesus, we need to be people who are making progress. And that means that we have to make some really tough decisions sometimes. And that means we have to do some things that on the surface are really difficult and really unpleasant at the time. But if we don't, and we always have a reason, we always have an excuse. And we have to ask ourselves some really sobering questions. Do I really believe what I say I believe? Do I really follow Jesus? Or do I merely like the idea? This is what we're all forced to ask. What we habitually do reveals who we are. Are you making progress? Or are you making excuses? No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident Who are the children of God? And who are the children of the devil? Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor is the one who does not love his brother. So we started this morning by seeing that God looks at us as his children. That we are his children. We've seen that Jesus destroyed sin. He paid the price by dying on the cross for our sins because God's standard is perfection and none of us can measure up to that standard. 
all of us fall short. It's not, it's not a test of how good you are, and it's not a scale. It's a pass-fail test, and all of us fail because none of us are perfect, and God is. God is holy, and God is perfect, and that is his standard, perfection. And none of us measure up to it. And yet God in his love, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our failures, still loves us anyway. So much that he desires that we would have a relationship with him. Made available to us through what Jesus accomplished on our behalf. By dying on the cross, raising again three days later, proving power over sin. Don't be held down by what God has already destroyed. We've been given everything we need. God is victorious, and he sees us as his kids. That is the incredible love that God has for us, that he sees us as his children. But not only that, The power of God comes and resides within us at the moment we make the decision to follow Jesus. At that very moment, God comes and resides within us. He gives us his Holy Spirit that comes and lives within us. We have been given everything we need. We have been made new. What we practice. What we practice. And who we love reveals who we follow. What we practice and who we love reveals who we follow. And it also reveals what we really believe about God. This is the test. That each of us faces. In a world in which we live where we will be misunderstood. Because it doesn't understand God. We've been called to live differently. We've been called to model what's right. We've been called to show love. This is our test. Are you making progress? Are you being transformed? Are you making excuses? It isn't going to be easy living in a world where you're always misunderstood. We're not in this alone. God is with us. We can see him and we can know him through the heart of God revealed to us in Scripture. And we're his kids. He's given us everything we need. So our charge is to understand the heart of God to engage with that through Scripture, and then to make sure that we are people who are being transformed, who are making progress, and showing that in the love that we have for those around us. This is the test that each of us faces. And this is the test that reveals what we really believe about Jesus. God, I pray that you'd help us be people who are in progress. Help us understand that sometimes it takes time and not to lose heart or be discouraged when we're becoming more like you, but we fail. Understanding that your forgiveness and your grace is readily available to us.
God, help us familiarize ourselves with the heart that you have revealed to us. And God, I pray that it would transform us. That we would be people who are transformed. We would be people who love well. And in spite of the fact that there are those who will never understand, that we not lose heart, that we not quit, but that we become more like you in every step of our journey. Give us the strength to make progress and to love well.